today's video, we are asking immigrants about their problems that they had in Bulgaria and how they solved them. I purposefully handpicked people who love Bulgaria, so they're here to only tell you about the problems, so maybe you can avoid them and start to enjoy Bulgaria like we do. Hi there, my name's Graham. My this... name's Vicky. <laughs> well, one thing I found quite difficult, although it's got easier for me as time's gone on, is uh, trying to buy building materials or convey exactly what it is I'm looking for. Thankfully, Google Translate has helped in the early days, it still helps now, but I've got some more basic language that helps me uh, buy various different bits and pieces. It's obviously the Cyrillic alphabet, and I think once you master the basics, you find it a lot easier. And because they obviously, they speak so quickly over here, you have to, you know, get them to repeat what you would like them to say. And mm. we're getting by and learning has been quite easy really there's been online courses that we've done and every time we're here the more we're here we we learn more from yeah. villagers and and um, people in the shops and and yeah I mean th obviously there are there are lots of difficulties uh, with the language barrier but in fairness you know the more time you spend in Bulgaria the, the more you pick it up another big thing has been the animals the stray animals you you just don't ever get over that to be honest but they're, they're so loving and they end up finding you. We've now accumulated a cat. We've brought a dog home to the UK. It, it, it has got better. They have started to tag them and neuter them in villages and stuff. So in the six years that we've been here, it, it, there's been a massive improvement yeah. in that. Yeah. But they, you know, it's if you wanted a cat or a dog, they will come and find you. Yeah. They just will. Yeah. In, in numbers. A few other things we found difficult when we, we bought the house was just sort of kind of getting used to the, kind of like the infrastructure and how you pay bills and you know things are very different in that respect. How would you explain it? Nothing's nothing's quite as it seems, is it? it well, no, it isn't. So obviously, a lot of the places where you go to, because our, our house is in a little village, and the next town on is where we go and pay our bills because we're in that that region but so uh, a lot of the little offices are like something out of the 1950s and and you know a lot of them look like old houses and, and none of them have got signs on no there's, no, go, no, there's never a trying sign to, trying to find the places where you pay bills has been an absolute nightmare yeah. to start with you know we go and pay our water in someone's front room but it, it does wait. feel like that <laughs> now you've got things like easy pay where you can actually pay it online mm. so we pay our electricity online our internet we don't because we they don't have that on easy pay because it's like a little village internet but that is one massive plus to this country is that the internet is phenomenal yeah. it really is yeah super another downside i guess are the bugs in the summer M mozzies and flies and especially for us because we are we're a, we're a little village but we're right near a lake so we have a lot of flies horse flies things like that but we always make sure we're well stocked up lots and lots of medicines and creams mm. and skin so soft is an amazing thing for the mosquitoes if you can get hold of that then that will keep the mosquitoes off mm. the other downside actually is being able to find workers to do your work because they are always so busy i mean when we actually renovated our house we had crews that had come down from sofia to do the whole house uh, roof all the inside the outside the mazilka they did all that at once but actually if you want little projects doing it's really difficult to find people to do that and, and people that you can trust as well I mean, it won't come as any surprise but there are as there are in all places in the world, but there are um, people in Bulgaria, Bulgarians and, and English people that will take your money and, and not necessarily run, but you don't necessarily get what you're expecting or you might find that things are unfinished. We've been very, very fortunate in that respect that some friends that introduced us to Bulgaria in the first place had a good friend who's a builder and he's done all of our renovations. We've had absolutely no issues at all. I don't think we've had any issues, have we? No. No, no. Not, not one. No, we've, we've been very lucky, but we do know of people that have. Yeah. I think word of mouth is a massive thing out here. Mm. People you know that have done things also, getting to know the locals, having friends in the village. You know, even if you yeah. can't speak the language, just seeing your neighbor, saying hello, 
uh, or maybe giving them a dozen eggs or, or giving them a bunch of flowers or anything like that. And you'll they're, get and you'll get the eggs back in return will, you will. tenfold as you, well. You will, yeah. They, yeah. you know, they're such a friendly bunch, and who knows who because everybody knows everyone in a village, mm. and they'll say, oh yeah, well they did this and they did this, and then that that's how it goes that's the way you can get things done someone will tell you where a specific shop is because often our i mean our next town on is like a grid and there are lots of shops that you don't even know are there and they're not signposted so you know you can guarantee that you can get keys cut you can get your hair cut you can go to a dentist you can do all those things but yeah. you have to know where they are and you find that out through other people yeah. people telling you so yeah. it is always about you know, making friends, getting to know your area, trying to learn the language. Mm. You know, like I say, it's an absolutely stunning, mm. beautiful country. There are so many pluses. Hi, I'm Sarah is in the air. I'm an artist in Bansko, Bulgaria, and I'm going to share with you a few situations I met uh, in Bulgaria since I arrived three years ago. And uh, one thing you should know is like, at the beginning, you might be a bit confused because when people say yes, when they're moving, moving the head, is the opposite of what we do in Western countries. So, for example, if I ask you if you want something and you say yes, means no for people. <laughs> and if you say that, it means yes. So you have to understand that at the beginning because I remember one of the first time I ordered something in a restaurant. I called the waitress and she did the sign of no. So I was so frustrated and I said, what's wrong? The second thing is um, I recommend you to take some time to learn a bit of Cyrillic because everything is written in Cyrillic. Um, I mean, in really small place, especially if you order food in the restaurant, you might be again a bit confused and frustrated. So just have a look on the Cyrillic alphabet and I can tell you people will be impressed because if you see you are, if you say you are able to read Cyrillic, you will look like kind of Indiana Jones or even a secret agent. <laughs> so that's a cool thing. And the other thing is people are not really smiling. So you always think at the beginning, especially to me, if people are not smiling, I think there is something wrong. And it's a bit frustrating because I used to live in Canada, everyone is super happy and looks, everything is amazing, da da da. In Bulgaria, it's not like that at all. <laughs> so, yes, uh, I warn you, if people are not smiling to you, it's not very something wrong, it's just the way they are and you have to accept it. But in the other end, they are really helpful. Anything you might need to be done, if they can help you, they will do it with pleasure and they are not asking for money in return or any recognition. So yes, just update your understanding of information and it's going to help you and save time and worry. Believe me, <laughs> see you soon. We settled around the VT area it's important to say that I managed to buy the property for, for us just before Brexit. I got over there, we managed to get the right property, find it, buy it, sort it, which made life very much easier, especially for me because I'm a UK citizen. My partner's Irish, so he's okay. In the future, should we buy anything, obviously he will do that because it just makes the process much easier. Research, 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 but anyone who's done this process will understand when I say that the photographs are usually very old. They can be a bit of a shock when you get there. For instance, some houses that were still standing on the photographs were barely standing when we got there. Get out to Bulgaria, go and look at different regions, go and explore regions. Even if you're not sure, if you don't think they're for you, go and have a look. Go and really check out the coast. Check out the parts up towards Romania. Go and have a look around Sofia and Plovdiv and then down towards the Rhodopis and down towards Greece. There's so many beautiful places. You may really like the Centre Plains with Stara Zagora and Kazanlak. They've got a wealth of history and beautiful backdrop of the mountains. My budget was very low. I'll be perfectly honest. I had £10,000 maximum purchase and to try and do some repairs. We looked in different regions. I looked at where 
I thought we might want to go. I did use Facebook a lot. I used Facebook forums, Facebook groups. I joined as many as I could. I asked advice from people. Everybody will know that sometimes the advice is good. Sometimes people can be quite negative and off-putting. I don't quite understand why, but on the whole, most of the expat community and Bulgarian people that I spoke to were extremely kind, helpful, informative, and fair with their advice, very fair. I think you need to be very clear about what you want. What do you want from your property? What do you want from your experience in Bulgaria? What are you looking for? Why are you choosing Bulgaria? Are you ready for it to be very, very different to the UK? Come and see as many properties as you can. Even ask the agents to take you to properties that are below your budget and above your budget. But really list your non-negotiables. Be clear about your non-negotiables because you can sometimes be swayed by a low price and think, oh, I can compromise on that. And actually, you need to be very clear about where you're willing to compromise and where you're not. My next bit of advice would be learn the language, at least to read the alphabet. For us, trying to negotiate a country where the alphabet was completely different to ours, where we couldn't even sound words out, we couldn't even read anything, was, was a massive stumbling block for us. It was, it was a cause of anxiety where there needn't have been anxiety, where there wouldn't have been in a different country. So we had lessons online while in the UK. You can do it free, you can learn on YouTube, you can do all of these different things. There are many, many, many ways to go about this, but in the end, we chose to have some lessons worked. When we went back to Bulgaria this time, we could read and it felt like we were unlocking a code. It was fabulous. The, a lot of anxieties and worries disappeared. We still couldn't understand what a lot of the words meant, but we could have a go. We could, we could actually decipher and decode what was around us, which we, I think was a real turning point for us in many ways. For this reason, I would say, try and find yourself a good interpreter to start with. There are lots online. If you go on Facebook forums, people will often recommend somebody. They are so helpful. It, it just saves so much time. If you're going to register a car at the CAT, when you're going to try and get your residency, all of these things are just so difficult unless you speak the language. And having somebody there that speaks the language will just make this so much more painless and faster just more reassuring to have somebody explaining to you what's being said it just is so much easier google translate can work to a point but for me anything legal anything really important like that having somebody to explain things and to be able to speak to the person fluently in their own language is just priceless the thing about builders is they will give you prices do they inflate them for expats almost definitely Expat builders will be slightly more expensive than Bulgarian builders, obviously. Bulgarian builders definitely charge English or other expats more than they would a Bulgarian. This is one of those things for me. I think the way that I deal with it is the way that I deal with anything when I'm in the market in Marrakesh or whatever. It's what am I willing to pay for that job? Where is my cutoff? Have your cutoff. Have your idea, look at UK prices, decide what you want to do in terms of where you go from that. But I would just say, if you are okay with the price, then what's the problem? It's not as cheap as some people say, but it's definitely not as expensive as the UK. Prices of things have gone up, building materials have gone up. They have definitely, when you go to practical yourself, when you start trying to buy wood for yourself, you'll understand that that's true. It's not somebody trying to pull a fast one. It is absolutely true. It's true the world over. But I think negotiate a price, check if this is variable, never pay up front. It's one of those. I think half up front for materials is probably acceptable. I think if you want something done, perfectly wait till you're there don't leave somebody to do it while you're not there i think my thing would be just be brave be you show them you smile 
Be willing to get your hands dirty if you can. Embrace the Bulgarian way of life as much as you can. And you'll love it. Bulgaria is fantastic. Hello, my name is Elena Rodriguez from Mexico. I am gynecologist and now also entrepreneur products uh, from Mexican cactus for the skincare. I was in Sofia eight years ago because my ex-husband is Bulgarian. I have two kids with him and I must say that Bulgaria conquer my heart. Because the difference between the Mexican culture and Bulgarian culture are so big. For example, the Mexican, we are more warm people, more friendly all the time. We want to be happy with this smile and, and wants to help to other people. When you look a foreigner in the corner to wait a bus or, I don't know, in the subway, you immediately say, hello, amigo, what is your name? Where are you from? Do you need, do you need help? This night is a party in my house. Do you want to gain or uh, do you want to meet my family? Immediately. It doesn't matter if he looks like a tall, black, white, doesn't matter. The Mexican, we are very, very friendly people. And here in Bulgaria is the opposite. Because in the beginning for me is shock because all the time I am like a Mexican. Hello, good morning, how are you? What is your name? I am from Mexico and these kind of things. And the people look me like uh, you are very crazy <laughs> because I want to smile all the time with my neighbors, with uh, the people from the subway, for the bus, in the taxi. I start to talk about my life, about my problems. And here is very strange. They look you like you are very, very crazy person. For me, it's why? Why they don't want to talk with me? Maybe I look very ugly. I have uh, something in my face because for me, it's a big shock to the people are very cold, very quiet, like they look very angry. For example, in Mexico, when you meet something, immediately you is a hug and kiss. You kiss the person, say hello, nice to meet you. I am Selena from Mexico. Oh, how are you? And this kind of things. And here is Zdravete, Pesheno mi priano, y try. And for example, nice to meet you, hello, and ciao. But they don't like to, to, touch, to, to touch the other people, to to talk about uh, these uh, stupid things for the life and uh, for me it's very very difficult to find what, uh, which is the chip for the Bulgarian people H how they turn off and they get uh, the smile with me but um, I lived here eight years ago and I now maybe understand a little bit more about the Bulgarian person, about the Bulgarian culture. They are very cool, but in the end, when they decide to be your friend, is for the, the rest of your life. They give you, they share you everything. For example, I have uh, Bulgarian friends and they give me everything when I am in problems. I trust in them and I know that they support me a lot. And in Mexico is a little bit because you know you never know who is your true friend because all the people are very friendly with you, but when you need uh, help for the real and in one real problem, Maybe you have 10 friends, maybe you have one, or maybe you don't have it. You don't have nothing. And in Bulgaria, no. When the people say, okay, I decide to be your friend, they are your friend for the rest of your life. And when they say, no, you don't like me, I don't want to be your friend, I don't want nothing with you, okay? You say that you can trust in, 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 in him or in her, and it's amazing for me because in Mexico we 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 are more 
we don't say the truth very for example if you say me give me one uh, dish i don't know and i say all the time oh it's delicious okay because you don't want to offend the other people and here say oh it's very ugly i don't like this food and it's for me it's very rude but they are like this they very they are very honest with you for me for me uh, the bulgarians are yes or no they don't have this a middle point like a mexican <laughs> then i think that the bulgarians are very angry they don't like to enjoy the life maybe for the weather because here is very cold and in mexico all the time is like a summer and the people are very friendly very warm but the bulgarian for me they they uh, are uh, very good persons and i can trust in the bulgarians and for that i have very very good friends bulgarians and for the last my advice if you want to live or travel in bulgaria uh, don't have any expectation about bulgaria neither hard nor low let bulgaria conquer you or discard you because bulgaria is like a bulgarian people they love you or they don't love you forever and ever and um, for me bulgaria represents a small undiscovered paradise uh, and for that i love bulgaria my heart is in bulgaria now maybe i find a new love in bulgaria maybe no maybe live uh, forever and ever in Bulgaria or maybe not but now Bulgaria for me is amazing country. Hi all my name's Craig. Alexana. We are originally from Devon in England, a beautiful part of the country. Uh, we now live in Plovdiv in Bulgaria. Yeah. Where we have been for around four and a half months. Slow pace of life here. Definitely slower. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Coming from UK, we, we like came off of hamster wheel. Yeah. The life you know, when you're going in the airport and you walk on these floor escalators and you come to a stop, that's how it is coming here. You're moving yeah. along and you stop. Uh, it took us time to, to adapt in a new, yeah, it, it new does. speed of life. Um, one of our challenges for moving to Bulgaria was obviously the uh, application for the D visa. Yeah. Um, we thought it'd be quite an easy process. Um, we tried to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. We wanted to come on a um, pension visa. Yeah. yeah. And then but we found I couldn't do that because- Craig wasn't old enough. I wasn't old enough, um, I'm 53. Um, we thought we've got enough savings in the bank mm -hmm. and we were lucky enough to receive some redundancy payment for mm -hmm. a company That's I've been with us out. Yeah. for a long time. And we thought, brilliant, let's go. Mm -hmm. But then they said, nope. You ha we have to find a different reason coming to Bulgaria. Um, the reason they turned me down is because your pension has to show your pension statement coming through. You have to have uh, a statement of money coming into account from your pension. And obviously I don't have that till I'm 55. So we have to take a different route. Mm -hmm. So we looked for a immigration lawyer then, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've used the immigration lawyer, and um, so she helped us out with the, helped us uh, out with um, uh, preparing all the documents. Um, and also, one of the requirements to apply for D visa, you have to have your um, lease agreement or renting yes. agreement. Uh, so you have to come to Bulgaria yeah, you have on to your visit first. Yeah, yeah on a tourist visa and buy something or rent something mm -hmm. so we came here uh, twice before we moved to bulgaria we okay, came here january. in january and in april april we, we've been to um many different towns yeah what we did we did burgas varna sofia Plotiv, sunny beach sunny Sofie beach Sofie. all these areas but we decided to come in the january so we didn't come here with rose tinted glasses yeah yeah and then we we liked what we seen mm -hmm. uh, Plovdiv was our favourite, even in the winter, yes. because it was a, a, a little bit warmer here. Warmer. It was quite cold oh. in Varna and Burgas yeah, in yeah. January, and then we decided to come back in the April. April, yes. Yeah. And, this and is we when visited we... the whole places again, mm -hmm. and give you a differential between Plovdiv and Sofia. 
when we came to Plovdiv, we're in t-shirts. In April. We went to Sofia and there were de-ice in the plane when we went back home. Yeah. That was the difference the in climate zones. It's, yeah. it's quite few. It's, it's quite split. So it was a no-brainer for us. We said we love the Plovdiv climate yeah, yeah. around. And the culture of the sea sea. So we, we rented a flat in Plovdiv. So yeah, we've got our, our renting agreement. Uh, so we gave it to our uh, lawyer and uh, she translated all the paperwork for us. Got it apostolized. Apostolized, yeah. And um, so we had to provide with a criminal check called ACRO. The ACRO criminal check. Uh -huh. uh, we had to provide... DBS check is not good enough. It no. has to be the British ACRO yeah, please ACRO check. test. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You have to provide with your British uh, bank statement so you have yes. enough money to support yourself in Bulgaria. That was around... Four thousand pound each in each account. Yeah, as and minimum for a year. Minimum mm -hmm. for a year. It has to be four thousand pound. First step was done. We we applied for D visa, and we was waiting. And while we was waiting, we actually moved to Bulgaria on a tourist visa. Yes. Well, we uh, couldn't wait. Yeah, and then after six six weeks, um, we uh, received an email to say come to London and collect your D yes. visa. So yeah, we applied in Bulgarian Embassy in London. You have to apply it in a country of, of your, your res or, res yes, residency. Yes, your origin. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can't come to Bulgaria and apply for a D visa. Yeah. You have to do it in country of origin. Yeah. And the next step is uh, to apply for your ID card and residency. Mm -hmm. And this is where <laughs> what challenges it, it's start. Another challenge comes. Yeah. Uh, most of the documentation used for your D visa is used mm -hmm. for your um, residency. residency permit yeah. and your ID card, which is great. Uh, one major difference is you have to have a Bulgarian bank account. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you think you just walk into a bank and they'll give you one? No, no. <laughs> we've been turned off. Three turned down by turned three down banks. By three banks straight yeah. away. Uh -huh. Won't mention them um, purely because we didn't have an ID card. We tried to explain to them. We need a bank account to get the ID card and they wouldn't give us it. So after a bit of research, we found KCB, KCB, Bank. KCB Bank in Plovdiv. Mm -hmm. They were amazing. Yeah, they were English, so helpful. English speaking, all we were, was required was our passport, passport, national insurance, British national insurance. And rent agreement. And rental agreement. Mm -hmm. Took them, filled them in around 12 o'clock. By the next day, we had our online um, uh, accounts, logins, yeah. logins, our bank account, and 24 hours after that, we had our bank cards. Mm -hmm. Very smooth, very quick. No Perfect. lawyers involved. Yes. No paying a lawyer thousand pound or a thousand euros to yes. open a bank account. Yeah. Please don't fall for that. You can do it by yourself. Because mm -hmm. we, we if had. You, if if you can get a translator to go with you, mm -hmm. good. But. The bank we went to, you didn't need one. Mm -hmm. you, you can get it. You, yeah. There's English people, speaking people there that will help you through it. And it was very, very simple process for us. Yeah, yeah, it cost definitely. us four levs. Mm -hmm. that, that was it. Four levs each for opening the bank account. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah the, the thing to be aware, um, when you go to apply for your residency, because you bring in the same paperwork that you used for your D visa, yes. just be aware that the documents, um, how would you say it's expired in 12 months in UK? Your it's ACRO, your ACRO police Criminal check, check yes. is valid for 12 months in UK. Six months here. But here in Bulgaria, it's only valid for six months. So be quick. After we nearly got caught out on this. D visa. Yeah. Try to apply for your residency as we quick as possible. We was going to run our D visa for five months. Yeah. And, and then, then apply. apply. Yeah. But then luckily we got told that your ACRO police check is only valid for six months. So we basically had to push it forward mm -hmm. a little bit more than what yeah. we wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Which be careful say. again with logistic companies moving. Um, the price variation is yeah, amazing. From the top guys to, to the lowest price was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we got we got most of our furniture moved over here for about 2,000, yeah, something like yeah, that. About yeah. 2,000 pound it cost us. Um, but we had quotes of 6,000, mm -hmm. we had quotes of a 1,000, mm -hmm. and we thought, hang on, people can't do it for a 1,000 because mm -hmm. the fuel would cost them that. So we, we found someone for about 2,000. Um, again, very good guys, 
they wanted um, your rental agreement, mm -hmm. your D visa application, application to show that you were doing your D visa application, mm -hmm. and that was enough to get them through the border. They obviously yeah. need a, a copy of your passport mm -hmm. as well. That helped, and your driving license of your original address in the UK to show that your goods are mm -hmm. being transported, your, your personal items. Mm -hmm. Also, every box has to be itemized what mm -hmm. goes in your boxes. Yes. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier for when they get to the border. Mm -hmm. If they do check them, for us, it went very, very smoothly mm -hmm. with that. But we had to sell our cars in the UK. Yes, uh, going back a bit. Mm -hmm. um, after six months, because we're not in the EU, if you bring any vehicles into Bulgaria, after six months, you have to exchange your plates, your, drive, uh, your license plates. When you do that, you'll get charged VAT and tax on the cost of your vehicle. Mm -hmm. You're importing. You're importing. Cars. So we sold both ours. Um, cars, yeah. Yeah, we sort of broke our hearts, but you know, mm -hmm. was it worth us? Because we'd have probably got rid of one car anyway when we were here. Was it worth keeping them both mm. and the hassle of changing plates and everything? No. So we're gonna buy um, a car from Germany and bring it in, or maybe a main dealer from here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh expats here expats are very um welcoming and very uh, accommodating to help you so have a look on your facebook yeah. uh for expats so we're on expats in plovdiv, plovdiv. there's expats in bulgaria um, sofia varna just look for your location yeah and join the expat group on facebook and you, you'll meet up with people mm -hmm. um that have had experience here yeah. and stuff one thing i will say to you is when we first came here we started talking to people that have been here two or three years. Their information that were given us, as good as it was, was outdated, yeah. unfortunately. The rules changing. Look, even talking to us, we've only been here four and a half months, but the rules could have already oh, changed. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, for example, like I said earlier, when we filled our visa form in, there was four options. Now there's about 10 or 12 yeah, options to come to, to, come to Bulgaria. Yeah, yeah. So They try to make it easier. The, the person that you need to speak to the people that have been here a couple of months and done it yeah. to get the latest information, you know, or your immigration lawyer, if you go to an immigration mm -hmm. lawyer, they're, they're pretty hot on it. But expats, they will be able to advise you on uh, which lawyer to use, uh, yes. which cars to building, buy, who. Building companies, if you're yeah. gonna use your building, where to look for flats yeah. and stuff like that. And this is where you make your contacts in yeah. the expat groups and it's really, really helpful. Yeah, it's, it's helped us. It will save you a lot of time and a mm -hmm. lot of money. Yes. Because unfortunately there's a lot of people out there trying to make a lot of money off right. people coming to Bulgaria um, for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. um, estate agents, be careful with your estate agents. Again, go on Facebook. Have a look at your expats that are living in the UK that might be renting their flats out. Mm -hmm. Some people even want you to go live there for six months while they're out of the country for six months rent free. Mm -hmm. They just want you to do a bit of maintenance. Mm -hmm. So have mm -hmm. a look for these people as well. You know, yeah. um, you've got people like Gareth that are, are very well informed now. Very helpful. This is why we're here because yeah. you know he's absolutely. Keeps and Gareth, advice. Gareth keeps up with all all the things that are going on. Where we're done. So, no disrespect. We're not interested now on what, how to get here and whatever, but people like Gareth who, who are doing this, you know, full time, keep up to date with it. So mm -hmm. these are the guys to go for. These are the guys that will keep you informed of what's going on and the yeah. changes. Please integrate with the Bulgarian people. Yeah, They are yeah. so helpful and genuine people. Mm -hmm. And uh, our landlord is like our best friend now, isn't he? Yeah. He's it, it's, 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 yeah. it's brilliant. They are so warming towards expats to come. Please learn the language. Yes, that will help. Please, please learn the language. Please integrate, mm -hmm. you know, please integrate. And you'll stay here. Yeah. People that leave Bulgaria leave for a couple of reasons. Pace of life is too slow. They didn't integrate and they don't learn the language. Yes. If you're not going to do any of that, please don't come mm -hmm. because you, you won't stay. You will yeah, not stay yeah. here. So it's very affordable. Everyone's budget yeah. is suited here. Yeah. And prices, food prices. Yep. I'll give you an example. We go to some shops, we can do a week shopping for about £40, mm -hmm. but then you can go to your Lexi, which is your weight rose. Like weight, uh, equivalent to weight rose in and, UK. And you can blow three weeks shopping in one week. <laughs> yeah, well, it, the country is for any budget. Yes. If you, if you are smart, 
you you can live quite cheap. Yes, you Bulgaria's got everything. Yes, honestly, definitely. It's the most underrated country in Europe oh, by yeah. far. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone says, "Why have you moved to a very poor country in Bulgaria?" It's got so much richness mm -hmm. to it, and I'm not talking financially. I'm talking culture. Plovdiv, where Nature, we live, culture. it's like a walking museum in Plovdiv. Oh, yes, yes. Everywhere you go is Roman ruins. You can sit and have your lunch on them. It, it's, it's amazing. Guys, you, you, you've got to come to Bulgaria and experience it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, we're running. If we had to do it all over again, would we move here? 100% yes. Yes, yes. yes we will. Absolutely. Yes. Not saying we don't miss England. We miss our friends. Of course. We lived yeah. on Dartmoor, so it was beautiful. Uh, but for the pace of life, the cost of living, Culture, culture, the food, people, mm -hmm, climate. Yes. We, we found our home. Yeah, absolutely found our. My name is Andrea. I'm from Ecuador, and I'm living here in Bulgaria uh, since December last year. I came here because my husband is Bulgarian. So I would like to share with you some of my experiences of my time living here. One of the most challenging barriers that you can face when you are here is the language, because here the English is not very widely spoken language and um, if you don't know at least the basics of the Bulgarian and the Cyrillic alphabet could be very very hard for you making even some simple and daily tasks like going to the supermarket to the bank or even when you are in the park so my advice how to come over it is to learn Bulgarian and since the basics of Bulgarian even before you come to the country. Find resources online that to your advantage and learn at least the basics before you come or as soon as possible when you are here, just learn them because it will be very helpful. Look, even in public institutions, you will have problems because we need to make some documents, some things there and the people there just doesn't speak. If you need to go to any of these public institutions, try to go with a friend or someone that you can find in, even in Facebook groups, people who's able to help you to go with you for a small amount of money to bring your help when you are in these institutions because there you just won't be able to do anything if you don't know a good level of Bulgarian. So just do it because this is one of the hardest things. Be the special. It's not easy to enter in a circle of uh, friends or making some acquaintances because they are a bit closed. Especially, this doesn't mean that they are bad. They are just special how they treat or high face to a foreigner. And you must be aware because this is not. This doesn't mean that they are rejecting us. Try to be flowing, flowing, flowing with them and try to make acquaintances of friends uh, maybe it's not easy in the street or if you have hobbies uh, keep doing your hobbies and then there you will find people that at least are having your the same interests like you and maybe you can make a friend or even in groups that you can use apps for this kind of hobbies just use it all the resources that you have nowadays we have a lot of resources that were not didn't exist in the past everything is online everything you have a lot of information of internet so just try to use on your advantage and don't don't get these things be stronger than you just do it because here as everywhere we have a good things and not very good things you know we just need to to get used to living in this and accept and respect all the differences here. And of course, one of the best things that I can tell about Bulgaria is that a very safe country, really, really safe. You can see everyone, the children are in the streets, very safe. Of course, there are some exceptions of areas or zones that maybe not quite safe, but Comparing to another places or around all the places that I've been, it's a very safe country. The important thing is to balance all the things that you are not feeling good with and all the good things that not only the country but few people is offering to you. Just take and balance it because here or everywhere will be hard if you are moving from your own country or your own city. will be harder. You just need to overcome and to see the positive here.
Hello, my name is Jen Lee. I am from the Philippines. I moved here in Bulgaria since 2017. And the trouble and issues that I encounter are reading the Cyrillic and understanding. Uh, to read the Cyrillic letters is first at first I familiarize how it pronounced and every time I see some signs in the street or anywhere I'm try I try to to read it and then sometimes I get confused of the this uh, written Cyrillic and this I don't know how they call this in Latin word it's capital letters so far I can read the uh, Cyrillic better now than before all I must learn is, is to understand and to communicate through uh, the Bulgarian language but I'm still trying my best to learn I have this residency with a family member under director 2004 slash 38 slash EC so I have this code in my resident card and this code is represents like you can travel around EU countries as long as you are traveling with your EU husband so you don't have you don't need a visa for for that if you are traveling with your husband and you have this code so but problem is at the airport usually they are going to ask for a visa and they are like not aware of this code so you need to explain there were there were times twice that i denied twice but so far it's okay because they really gave me a refund and compensate the hassle that you know that was created because of this you can explore more places in Bulgaria. There are many places that you really need to explore and some uh, more historical places. And it's a, it is a beautiful country. And see, especially if you are uh, on the I'm an American who has moved to Plovdiv before Bulgaria. I lived in Mexico and Spain and about in Asia. And probably my first challenge was to make sure I actually wanted to live in Bulgaria. So I made several visits for two or three months at a time during different times of the year to experience the different weather. And I, each time I rented several short-term apartments in different neighborhoods of Plovdiv. I knew I wanted Plovdiv. I had visited other places. I liked Plovdiv. But I was sort of making sure I really did want to move and choosing the type of apartment and type of neighborhood that I really liked. And as a result, I did end up buying an apartment, but that was after you know, seven months of experience in various different neighborhoods and different apartments. So I'm very happy with what I've got and with the neighborhood I'm in. Another challenge happened very early on in my first visit in uh, a short-term apartment in Plovdiv. One day the water went off and I thought, oh, it'll be off for a couple hours. They're probably working on the water mains. It was off for two weeks, almost every day for two weeks, including one night overnight, it was off. And that was almost it for Bulgaria for me. There were many aspects of it that I liked, but if I couldn't have water, it wasn't going to work. But locals reassured me that that was unusually bad and I stuck it out. And I can say that that has not been an issue, a serious issue. I have water containers now that I keep in the house. And once recently the water was off for like two hours, fine, I had water in a container. Another challenge was less of a challenge for me, but it was the visa because I'm an American and I came as a business owner. So I needed a trade representative office set up and rather than struggle through it on my own, I hired a lawyer. So then it was just a matter of giving her each piece of paper as requested. And she went with me to the immigration office for the main submission. And since then, when I've had to go, I've been able to go with my very basic Bulgarian with no issues. The immigration ladies are very patient with me. And the whole immigration experience has been far, far easier than in Spain. In Spain, I actually speak Spanish, but that does not help you with the bureaucracy, which is notorious. And for example, in Spain, renewing my visa was five months every time. Here, it's apparently two weeks. So. If you've had bad experiences with other visas, you might find that in Bulgaria, it's much simpler. 
So come and try out different places, different ways to live. Prepare for things you might not have expected, such as the water going off. And the, the visa, if it's your first visa, it might seem really challenging, but in the realm of other visas, at least in my experience, it has not been nearly as bad. I feel much more at home here in Bulgaria than I have in any other country. In other countries where I've lived, I haven't meshed as well culturally, whereas here in Bulgaria, I feel like people are, they, they are more mellow, more accepting, much easier to relate to. And for example, if you've lived in Spain, you might notice that people speak loudly and quickly, and there can, you can feel a sense of urgency or pressure, which I didn't enjoy. I don't have that here. I feel like you know, people are mellow. It, it's not, nothing's a really big deal. This is Maria Borovic, and I'm here in Bulgaria already seven years. And I'd like to say that Bulgaria is a very, very big part of my life and my heart. But I met here when I just arrived. First of all, it was Bulgarian bureaucracy. Mwah! My loving... <laughs> oh, bureaucracy is incredible everywhere, all over the world. But here, it's something very special because all these places where you come to to take some documents or to give some documents, they organized honestly very bad. Maybe now situation is better, but when I arrived seven years before, this place was full of middle-aged women who speak only Bulgarian. Of course, which foreigners in <laughs> such places? And honestly, they were quite rude. Uh, once I was in the situation when one woman, he tried to explain me something, but I didn't hear her because it was quite noisy in that place. And I asked again and again, Molla, Molla, excuse me, excuse me, that I don't hear. And finally, she threw papers to me and said, you don't know a Bulgarian, come with translator. Uh, I do mistakes in Bulgarian language of, uh, as well as in English, but I can speak more or less and I understand. So it was like, wow, what is it? Okay, bureaucracy is everywhere actually. It's not something special, but it was one of the... Another problem is loneliness. Migra uh, typical loneliness of migrant. Because when you arrive to the new place and you're not a student, where, do me, where will you meet the new friends? If you're very young and you come somewhere for studying, you make friends just very easy. There's just people around you, when you meet, uh, let's go there, let's go there, and it's, it goes and ba bam you have, after some years, you have like 10 friends. But when you're an adult, it's much more complicated. Because um, people have their own problems, they have their own families, their own kids. Very often, even if they're friendly, even they want to make new friends, they very, very often they just have no time, they have no possibility to make new friends. They can be very kind to you, but they will not become your friends. First, uh, my years here, I think a couple of years, was quite tough about it. Uh, how I solved this problem? I visited a lot of meetups, uh, events which I, found, uh, which I found on Facebook and talked and talked and talked in my broken English, in my broken Bulgarian. I spoke, <laughs> I tried to explain who am I, why am I, why am I here and to make new friends and Succeed. <laughs> now I have many friends here in Bulgaria and I'm happy about it and it's people all, all over the world. Yeah. I love Bulgarian people. They're very friendly. They're very helpful. They're open. Mm, they are uh, such an easy person to 
such an easy person as I, uh, I don't know, for... Um, how to how to tell it better? They're just nice. <laughs> They're just nice. They're just nice. Uh, there are so many materials uh, on Facebook, on internet about like how beautiful Switzerland's Alps are, but not such so many information about Radopi, for example. But Radopi is incredibly beautiful. It's just I don't know when I first. With the Bulgarian mountains, it was uh, real mountains. I was like, oh, is it really? Is it real picture? It's not a postcard. It's real. It's real. It's something unbelievable. Because stereotypically, Bulgaria is like something very Soviet. But it's not. It's very interesting and it's very. Um, Full of very different stuff. Very different. Some some things are very modern. Some things are very old-fashioned. For example, these people on horses, which are inside the series. Something very special. Only on Balkans you can find it. Not in other countries. Hi, I'm Jaisal. I am married to a Bulgarian, and I am now living here in Varna, Bulgaria. I've never really had a big problem about the paperwork in moving here, but the biggest challenge was to bring this guy here with me. His, his name is Prascho. He was born in the Philippines, but I managed to bring him here with me last March this year. And the paperwork were crazy. And apart from that, I had to make sure that all his vaccinations and microchips were done and complete. But in the end, it was all worth it. When we arrived at Sofia Airport, they accepted us and we didn't have any problem at all. But just the paperwork and all the process were really insane. And I think he's the only Filipino dog who managed to come here in Bulgaria. Um, problems that we see here in Bulgaria, um, for sure, everybody complains about politicians. In every country, so here as well, um, nobody really trusts, um, like you know, like decision makers. Uh, but what to do? You know, like I also have my uh, disagreements with the German politicians. But this is the good part, you know. You don't need to agree. You can express your disagreement, and that's basically also possible here in Bulgaria without any problems. Um, what I wish Bulgaria would would figure out is um, the eye for details. Whatever you do, you know, there's always a bit of details missing. Like you get things done, you ask somebody to, you know, like repair something, and there's always this little this little piece that shows, like, okay, he's for sure he does his job, but if that would me taking care of it about my personal things i would probably put a bit more effort so the details um they show a bit the difference between um where i come from and uh in bulgaria but also it has its beauty for sure you know and uh, i wouldn't really say that that's like a, a lack i would rather say that's a different perspective of things and uh, definitely bulgaria is not the only country uh, which has uh, which has this type of personality. There are plenty of cultures which are um, similar, I would say. So here's one advice I would like to share with you. Don't push. For sure, don't push. Uh, people do their stuff here the way how they do their stuff here. People are more than willing to help you, but if you force them to help you, if you push them to help you, they were just gonna have you longer on hold you know be nice to them ask them if you can assist them if there is something that causes little delay but people really just they don't really push you know so please just also don't push too much if you come here with let's say expectations from your hometown uh you're, you're from the attitude you grew up with just try to understand that these people here they grow up differently and that's why everything works a bit more relaxed 
and um, you will see that for example when you drive on the uh, on the interstate roads here when you drive uh, in the city center um, when you try to park your car here uh, so these things for example you will see instantly road conditions sometimes can become very difficult um, but this is the way how it is here you know so that's something really just try not to push it um, sometimes Bulgarians try a bit to get an advantage since uh, expats usually come with a bit more of like a more wealthy background than Bulgarians but um, well this is the way how I do it I got comfortable sometimes to pay a bit of extra but I try always to let the other person know that I know it's more expensive for me than for locals and I'll tell them I pay it I'm okay and that's the way how I see it but uh, for sure that's not very comfortable for all of it for example when it comes into rent uh, I always have on rent on legal on, on on bigger fees you know like not the the taxi fee which is maybe I leave you know 10 20 percent extra but uh, whenever there is um, a bigger level of service that costs a bit more I usually make sure that I don't get ripped off um, or feel uncomfortable and uh, I've experienced that in Germany as well so I wouldn't really say it's like only happening here but I would definitely say it's something that um, sometimes I have feel I have felt or other people exp uh, explained to me so a quick overview of the problems people seem to have loneliness can be a problem so don't forget to go into groups in on the internet and carry on with your hobbies to meet new people and with those acquaintances you can get the recommendations needed for people for different services you require don't be off put by the way the Bulgarian people seem to be upset. This is just in their nature and they are not upset. And make sure that you get updated with the laws about entering into the country as that is changing all the time also. The other big issue seems to be you need to learn the language. Now, I have an amazing video with free tips and how you can speed up that language learning when you come. So check out this video now.